My name is Melissa Rowe, and I teach drama and English at Sir Johnny McDonald. And I'm Amy Brickshank from Southwood. I'm Karen Lilly from Eastwood. I'm Garrett Titus, uh, serving in drama LTO at Grand River. I'm Cheryl Martin, and I'm at Cameron Heights. I'm Oriana Benavides, and I'm at Preston. And we were invited to share with you about our experiences in the drama and dance learning cycle for the board. Um, but we often found uh, in the process of thinking through what we've done that that was kind of a limiting definition. So we want to invite you to be part of this uh, growth mindset learning community that we have been building uh, over the last number of years and, and talk about that. So when we began, uh, we often, we were all in our, our separate schools and drama is one of those subject areas and you might be in a subject area similarly or in a course similarly where you're the only person teaching that. And although there can be some freedoms there, there are also uh, a feeling of kind of being isolated at times and that you're the, you're the lone wolf in the pack doing your thing in the school. And so we wanted to bring, uh, leave that kind of island feeling and um, band together and start to share some of our best practices and see what happened as a result. So we thought, let's put our many brains together uh, and can we create something larger than ourselves or what a single person can do in order to foster our student learning. And after lots of meetings um, and uh, lots of uh, projects that we embarked on, uh, we found that one of the benefits of that is that we don't all think the same and we do try a wide variety of practices in our, in our classrooms, but that diversity makes us all the more rich uh, as a community of learners. So we began three years ago, and I wrote a proposal based on the ADR needs and this lone wolf or island effect that we all seem to be having as drama and dance educators in the board. And right from the beginning, we had 10 of 16 um, WRDSB secondary schools involved, over 20 committed drama and dance teachers, and that has equaled over the last three years a dynamic learning community. Our six areas of focus right from the beginning, and we've again evolved this as we've gone through the three years, has been using digital and uh, analysis to tools to create critical digital thinking and critical thinking in our students, promoting student voice and choice, uh, digital resources for collaboration, which has now evolved into a living portfolio, which is a document that's continuing to change, expanding our learning beyond our classrooms, and fostering a supportive, inclusive learning culture for all teachers, no matter where they are in their career. Okay, so before we get to talking about um, the ways that we're using digital tools in drama and dance, we wanted to take a moment and just talk about some of the strategies that we use for building community. Um, as drama teachers, we really value communication, both in a digital platform and face-to-face. -face. Um, I recently read an article on The Atlantic that was talking about how many apps are actually designed to make us addicted to our screens. So that face-to-face -face component can be quite challenging. And Oriana is going to talk about some of the ways that she's uh, worked on that with her classes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I would argue that you can't do any of this stuff, you can't do any of these new uh, digital techniques with your class unless you have an environment where kids feel safe, heard, and uh, are willing to participate and take the risk with you. So I, um, I realized that there had been a change in the students I was seeing when I returned from Mountie last year. Um, you might have experienced it too. I saw less kids participating, more kids using the word anxiety, less kids wanting to get up and present. And last year, I taught all English for the first time. So coming at it as a drama teacher, I saw this change. And I would often see the same kids in drama that I saw in my English classroom. In the drama classroom, they were willing to get up in front of each other. They were a totally different kid than I saw in the English room. And I thought, there must be a gap happening. I'm not doing something in English that I do in drama. So I decided to do an experiment and dedicate five to 10 minutes, three days a week, to building that community, creating that safe space to see if I would see a change in my students. So this is what I do. Um, on Mondays, we do Meta Monday. And it's based on temperatures that we do in drama, where basically we just tell each other how we're feeling in a simple way. So the, the rules here are everybody needs to participate, including myself. You don't have to elaborate on why you're feeling that way though. So I may give them a number from one to 10 and they can tell me, and this is powerful for me because we all know that what we bring into the classroom, how we're feeling is gonna affect how we learn that day. And so I know that I may have to modify what I'm doing based on how my class is feeling. So that's the first day. Uh, second is What's Up Wednesday, and that is simply asking the class a question. We all know that teenagers love to talk about themselves, and so I use this to my advantage. And so we do something completely unrelated to what we're doing in class, a simple question, 
starting with things like what's your favorite color and then moving on to more elaborate stuff where they might have to expand, like what's the worst gift you ever got? Okay, so that's Wednesday. And then Friday is fun or feedback Friday. We might play a game just to foster that community again. Or I ask them to provide me feedback on how they're feeling. It's a bit different than I would have before. Um, but I might, I, it's more of an emotional gauge of how the class is doing with the content that we're working on. And I might ask them to do that creatively, like draw a picture of how you're feeling with this assignment. They might talk to others and they'll share it with me. Um, and we try different ways of doing that. Okay, so those are the three days I do. So the results were pretty um, impressive. Last year I had all students participate in presentations. Not a single student denied getting up there in front of the class, out of three classes. And they were more willing to work with each other, work in groups, um, step outside their comfort zone. And I just saw them more engaged than I had in a while. So a couple of things that I want to give you, though, that I learned in the process is, first of all, what prompt you provide your class will affect the climate. So if you're going to ask them a question, keeping it positive and light might be the best place to start. If you give them a negative question, you might end up with a negative environment. So it depends on what you want in the day. And the other thing you need to keep in mind is if you decide to do this, you have to stick with it because they will come to expect it and they will be really mad at you if you stop doing it. So they end up feeling less valued if you start it and you stop it than if you had never done it at all. So I highly recommend that you try it. So during our first year um, in our learning cycle, we realized there was a student need and a student voice for our digital resources and this was before the Chromebook rollout of the one-to-one. -one. So I just have a short clip that we um, will play with our students. The access to the Chromebooks useful in the drum classroom because it allowed me to rewatch my performance and see things that I didn't see the first time. When we needed to write something up, it was a lot easier to get the Chromebooks into our drama room that, rather than switch rooms. It's more time efficient because I can focus more on the quality of my work. The Chromebooks are fun and simple. It's easier to take home and work on instead of having books and papers. I think the Chromebooks are more efficient than the standard way because they're simple and accessible. It's better than using paper because I can't lose it. It's eco-friendly and you save a lot on the paper and supplies. Being someone that misses school off for sports, it's easier to bring home and work on. Documents are portable and all saved in one place rather than different binders. You can take it on vacation because you can access your files on your phone. I like Google Docs because you can work faster than working on paper. It's easier to read everyone's writing. It's easier to collaborate in groups. It teaches us important tech skills that we can use in future careers. So once we had devices in our students' hands, I became pretty interested in how do we, what do we do with them. So I started with Google Hangouts in my classrooms to connect classrooms. And I tried it in two different areas. I tried it at elementary level, and I tried connecting with my colleagues at the secondary level. Uh, Google Hangouts was board supported, and uh, it didn't come without learning curves for me as well. Uh, I started with theater for young audiences. I helped my kids, my own students, craft pieces for, for kids, for JK audience and for a grade four audience. I approached my kids' teachers, my own kids' teachers and my friends who are elementary educators and I said, I have an idea, do you want to try something? And they were very receptive to it. What that did for my students was give them an authentic audience, which was really empowering for them and really engaging for them. They learned a lot about specific audience needs. A JK kid is going to get wiggly in their seat a lot faster than a grade four kid. A grade four kid's going to laugh more than a JK kid. They're going to get comedy. So they're learning things like laugh curves that are hard um, to, to teach. Um, it also provided an opportunity for in-house field trip for the elementary kids. They didn't have to get buses and permission forms and it was free, which is a great price. And it provided opportunity for that Q&A afterwards. The students could explain their learning. Knowing the content in advance, the elementary teachers could prep their classes to craft some critical questions for them, um, to talk about the student's process. And it was um, not without learning curves, with the synchronous and asynchronous and streaming, there was definitely a learning curve for me um, as an educator, but it was absolutely hugely valuable for my students. Then I tried some things at the version two level, at the secondary level, and I connected again in a safe spot. I connected with Amy's class, because Amy and I have known each other for many years now, and I said, let's try this and see what happens. And we started with an assignment that we had similarly crafted in our classes, to look at how did your class end up here and my class ended up here. 
and we did a comparison of our results. We adjudicated each other's classes. So the authentic audience also became an authentic adjudication because Kit didn't have a preconceived notion of the rehearsal process or the content or who was the star in the class. They were able to really give good descriptive feedback student to student on their performances. We tried it in uh, USB, we tried it outside of uh, Google Hangouts because Hangouts can pick up lots of the, the noise. So there's definitely a variety of approaches. But the really important thing is with the different audiences that I was able to provide the kids that they absolutely were more engaged. The students get better feedback, better descriptive feedback to each other. And they still got their class feedback, they still got teacher feedback, they still had beautiful written feedback afterwards, but in that moment they had wonderful learning student to student. And Mel's gonna actually walk you through what some of that feedback looks like as we've crafted it over the last couple of years as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as we started looking at ways that we could help our students um, not only get information from us but also between each other and create authentic audience feedback, um, we wanted to ground it in the idea that a suggestion uh, or feedback becomes a place to create from rather than anything critical or negative. So we helped us set up that uh, groundwork first with our students. We, as a group, um, brought together a number of different resources to try. We looked at Coach's Eye, we looked at Formule. Um, however, a number of us landed in the same place, and it was a combination of using Google Forms and creating a template uh, of common language with our students, and then using a, a simple add-on called DocAppender. How many people have used DocAppender or tried that out in their classes? Great. Oh. You guys have the most expertise in, the, in all of our rigid sessions. So, um, so um, uh, this is what we decided to do. And so I just want to talk you through uh, the steps very quickly as to how to set that up in September. Whatever your criteria is, um, this, this model allows you uh, to create a customized portfolio for each student of their feedback ongoing throughout the whole semester. So then they can go back and start to chart um, reoccurring strengths and also reoccurring areas um, of challenge for them to, to build upon. Uh, so first of all, just start with a folder, a Google Classroom folder that you are going to um, house your adjudication in. Create a simple document, blank document, with each student's name on it. That becomes their home base where they're going to get their feedback. Secondly, you will create a Google form. And in this case, uh, at our school, we use strengths and performances, two of them. They need to be thoughtful, specific, and constructive, and then also a director's suggestion. So whatever subject area you're, you're in, whether it's uh, a coach, a director, or an instructor, this is the place where if you get to work with this group again and mentor them or coach them, uh, what would you like them to focus on moving forward? Once uh, a student has been assigned to a performer or a group, that drop-down menu is included in your Google form. So they can click on the person they're sending that information to, record their information either during a performance or afterwards, and you build in time for that, and then it gets sent to them directly. So that student gets a beautiful little chart focused on the, the project that they worked on, with that information um, in an easy to locate place. So they can go back to it and reflect on it in their practices. Um, the little puzzle piece up there is where you get your add-on. You just type in DocAppender and then it offers you a sidebar to coach you through right on your Google form so that you can set that up. And you've already done step one by creating um, the place uh, holder for your students. So uh, that's, that's uh, in a nutshell what we've done in our adjudications. It moves the communication between students and groups of students, uh, and then they're able to take that information and build upon it and move outwards. And uh, some of our students have been able to uh, take that information and start to look for other communities outside the classroom where they're also focusing in that subject area or that theme, and they've invited in um, guest performers who have something in similar like commonality with them, or guest artists as well, that they're interested in their work. All right, so our digital feedback that we use in the drama classroom, and I had my students create a little video just to model some of what that looks like and sounds like, is um, we give it individually to our students when they're performing, they give it to one another with peer feedback, and they also do self-analysis and self-feedback. We call these adjudications.
form has been shared with you on the Google Forms. So if you scroll down on your Google Form that's been shared with you, all of the criteria is there for the adjudication. There's drop down menus for the names of the person you're adjudicating, and then all of the criteria is there under short answer or checklist form. feedback because it gives the adjudicator more of an opportunity to be concise and explicit in their feedback instead of just verbal where they would just uh, blurt out the first thing that came to mind. Really well, like, like the facial expressions were really strong, like Emily and Allie and Devin. Just Jane, I think you can work on just a bit and she's still really good. Just, I think if you box to more, you can like clear Digital feedback in drama class is a lot easier than the old school method. Um, I hate scrambling and writing down notes on a piece of paper really fast. Digital feedback is a lot more organized and I can usually do it from home really easily. Okay, so in the blank form that's been shared with you, using the Doc Appender app, the person you adjudicated, the criteria will go directly to that person through the Doc Appender app. Students are the number one focus of everything we do. Uh, in order to 
make the most enriching and engaging experiences, we, we can't neglect developing strong and confident teachers. Um, so for me, having a resource such as our drama and dance learning cycle, it, it's been invaluable to me and, and it's helped accelerate my professional development um, as a new member of the board. Uh, not only have our uh, drama and dance learning cycles made me feel embraced as a colleague uh, and part of our board-wide art community, but they've, they've also given me access to a massive amount of proven lesson material uh, uh, via our shared online community. Uh, and the resources procured, procured and shared by my colleagues online and during our live learning cycles uh, has also helped me navigate certain processes uh, such as um, you know, board administrative procedures, paperwork for doing a field trip, for example, uh, much quicker than if I were to you know, have to get all that information on my own. Um, and the sheer amount of curriculum ideas, best practices, and other digital resources amassed through our uh, DDLCs, uh, both during my time with the board and before, uh, has allowed me to basically have a mentor, a virtual mentor teacher at my fingertips. If I need a lesson plan, I click in our folder, I find all that right there. Um, so I would encourage all of the departments to develop uh, or continue to develop an online community uh, that you can collaborate in and please invite new teachers, even LTOs, to participate. Okay, so I'm the mid-career teacher. Um, I've been with the, uh, the board for 15 years now. And um, so my experience involved coming back from some leaves and, uh, and trying to get my feet back under me and there were things that had changed and uh, with all of the digital tools that were out there, you know, you might have felt like you missed a few steps and you were trying to catch up. And this has been a really great opportunity to um, just be able to feel comfortable with Google, to um, be able to use all of the things that are out there and to um, implement them in my classroom. One of the things that I like best is the creation of student portfolios. So when students are doing performances, we record them and then uh, share them with each of the students. So at the end of the semester, they can look back on their whole semester's worth of work, um, and then they've got their uh, feedback there as well. So that's been a, a really great way for them to, you know, focus on areas they need to improve, but also celebrate their own successes. And then our seasoned teacher perspective, one of them couldn't be here today, so she has a little bit of video for us to share. <coughs> Greetings to everyone attending the Digital Learning Symposium. I'm sorry I can't be there, however, I hope you'll consider my input as a seasoned educator who is in the final years of her teaching career. I've been committed to this enthusiastic group of drama and dance educators for the past several years. Our group growth mindset is to foster a supportive, inclusive learning environment for all educators so that we might further engage our students in productive and interactive learning environment. Initially, I got involved because I wanted to network with my colleagues and I wanted to learn more about Chromebooks and the use of them in my drama and dance classrooms. However, the more I learned, the more excited I got about digital resources and the technology that could enhance and vary my teaching practices and ultimately increase student enthusiasm, productivity, and assessment in my classrooms. I found that the more strategies I applied in the classroom, uh, the more the students would invest in their own learning outcomes. And instead of preaching lessons with my direction, the students were able to commit in their own learning uh, in a variety of ways and achieve the goals and objectives of the curriculum. The students seemed happier and so was I. I like to think uh, that I'm always evolving as an educator, so I was thrilled with this new thinking and the use of technology in the classroom. I got really excited. Um, I almost wished I could start my career over again. Um, I, I, the, it's been like a breath of fresh air for me, and I must say that I can't overlook the reality that after teaching for many years, one can get a little stagnant, or maybe be uh, unmotivated to adapt to new teaching practices, and maybe even begin looking forward and towards the retirement. But um, I know that there are many seasoned teachers like me who want to engage their students and continue to inspire and lead in the best way that they know how right to the end of their career. So I just want to share that I'm really happy to have been involved in this learning cycle. I feel better about my ability as an educator and I'm more on top of my game. So thanks for providing me with the opportunity to reinvest in my own lesson prep and engage with my students in a really exciting learning environment. Uh, technology and, uh, and learning of it has been fantastic, so thank you so much.